Welcome to therapycable.com. I'm Dr. Asan Garajadaki, the founder of Therapy Cable, and this episode is a video interview on the topic of Alzheimer's. I'm here with uh, wonderful Dr. Taryn Clark. She is a neurologist with a specialty of uh, focusing on assessing and treating Alzheimer's disorder, as well as other related memory disorders. She's also working at the Shankhill Clinic at the Hoke Neurosciences Institute, as well as she is the medical director at the Alzheimer's Family Services Center. And our interview today will focus on questions that are important for Alzheimer's and uh, patients dealing with Alzheimer's as well as their caregivers. Thank you, Dr. Clark, for joining us on Therapy Cable. Thank you for having me. We will be discussing a few of our important questions in a few seconds. Wonderful. So stay with us as we will start our discussion about Alzheimer's. Thank you very much. Uh, so the first question I would like to start with is uh, very, very basics. What's the difference between Alzheimer's and dementia? That's a great question because I think there's a lot of confusion in the public vernacular, mm -hmm. in the way we speak about these disorders. And the short answer is that dementia is a symptom or a description, and Alzheimer's disease is a disease. Another way to understand that is to think about the difference between the flu and a fever. A fever is a symptom, and the flu is a disease that can cause a fever. So if we step back then again and talk about dementia, that describes a level of functioning such that people have difficulty with some of their activities of day-to-day -day living. When somebody has that symptom of dementia from a change in memory, it's important to, to figure out what's the diagnosis, what's the disease or disorder that's causing that change in function. Alzheimer's disease is a disease that can cause people to function at a level of dementia but it's one of many causes or diseases that can do that. Some of the disorders and diseases are treatable and reversible, and it's very important to identify those. So when somebody comes to a physician with the symptom of dementia or memory change that's significant, it's really important to determine the diagnosis or cause of that change in level of function. Thank you very much for the thorough explanation. That's a very important distinction. How can someone find out whether or not memory loss and other cognitive difficulties are due to Alzheimer's disease? And what specifically uh, should you look for? So when we're trying to determine the cause of changes in memory, we use laboratory tests and imaging studies to determine what's changing in the brain. An example of an imaging study that might be used would be an MRI scan of the brain. Um, lab tests can identify many general medical changes, including vitamin deficiencies, a history of exposure to infections that can change the way the memory is functioning. It's not uncommon for us to identify two or three different things that are contributing to a change in memory. We often diagnose Alzheimer's disease but also find that depression or a vitamin deficiency are also present. And it's important to treat anything and all of those things together that can be changing our memory function. So the next question I have is, how does an individual receive a proper diagnosis for their loved one? And what does the diagnosis process look like? For instance, what questions will be asked and what to bring to the appointment? So if somebody has a concern about their loved one's memory and they're taking them to a neurologist for evaluation of memory, the most important items that the loved one or caregiver can bring to that appointment are a good history of the changes in memory so the doctor can understand the progression of what's happening. Often that pattern of change of memory function is very helpful in arriving at the accurate diagnosis. The other important pieces that the loved one can help bring to that visit are a medical history, what other general medical conditions the patient might suffer from, and also a current list of medications. 
a lot of our medications actually can negatively influence memory, so it's important for the doctor to be able to identify those. At that first visit, using the information provided in terms of the history of memory change, the past medical history, and the current medications, then the doctor can determine what laboratory tests and what imaging tests would be appropriate in trying to arrive at the correct diagnosis. Usually at that first visit, the physician will order lab tests and MRIs or other imaging tests. It's important to understand that it can take several visits to arrive at the correct diagnosis. You know, a hot button issue right now for seniors is driving. Can you talk about knowing when to take away the keys and how to address other issues surrounding that loss of independence? Driving is a really important issue, especially in a place like Southern California, where we're very dependent on driving to get almost every place we need to go. The DMV requires that drivers inform the DMV when they develop any medical conditions that could affect safe driving. Some examples of those would be memory changes and changes in vision. When somebody has a diagnosed memory disorder, the DMV wants to reevaluate them with a written and a driving test to assure that they're a safe driver. Another really valuable community resource to help patients and families determine their abilities to drive safely are some of the senior driving courses. AARP, for example, offers a comprehensive course that involves not only reviewing the new laws and helping people prepare for taking those tests, but also goes over alternatives once the patient is not driving anymore to help them stay active in the community. Now, as current research suggests, there is no magic pill for Alzheimer's. And uh, what are some of the medications on the market, types, how they work, side effects, etc., if you could talk about those? You're absolutely correct. We currently don't have a cure for Alzheimer's disease, but we do have a regimen of medications that greatly change the progression of the disease. With a combination of the currently FDA-approved medications, combined with exercise, we can slow down the progression of even Alzheimer's disease by 50 to 60 percent, which makes a huge difference in quality of life. In addition to those FDA-approved medications, we have a number of medications currently in clinical research trial which show some promise in terms of further slowing down this disorder. We can't reverse Alzheimer's disease with what we currently have available, so that makes it very important to diagnose the disease as early as possible so we can slow down the progression. Our goal is to prevent patients from ever reaching those severe levels of dementia that can be caused by these disorders. What other types of questions and issues should a caregiver be addressing with his or her loved one's physician? One of the things that changes so much in Alzheimer's disease and related memory disorders is communication. The overall guiding principle in communication should be kindness. Mm -hmm. Working with a physician who specializes in cognitive disorders, can, they can help guide these conversations and understand the language that's most kind to use when we encounter day-to-day -day difficulties in communication. That can really improve quality of life for patients and their families. Other resources to help families um, and caregivers communicate well and kindly with affected loved ones would be the Alzheimer's Family Services Center and other support groups. Meeting other folks who have been through these challenges and developed strategies to maintain kindness despite the day-to-day -day challenges that arise is very helpful. How does adult day health services work? What are some of the benefits for those affected by memory loss as well as their caregivers? So adult day health services provide physical, emotional, and cognitive stimulation in a safe and understanding environment. By doing so, we provide patients with that socialization that they need to maintain their good day-to-day -day function. In addition, it provides a respite for the families from their caregiving responsibilities. What are some of your responsibilities as medical director of Alzheimer's Family Services Center? My main responsibility as the medical director of the Alzheimer's Family Services Center is to act as a liaison between the Alzheimer's Alzheimer's Family Services Center and the participants, physicians in the community. 
The AFSC staff know these participants so well that they're all often able to pick up small changes in their health status before they might be noticed at a routine doctor's visit. In that way, we can keep the healthcare community connected and optimize our patient's health. What makes AFSC so special about helping individuals impacted by Alzheimer's and other dementias? The AFSC aims to maintain the cognitive, emotional, and physical well-being of all of its participants. So participants who are at the Alzheimer's Family Services Center routinely go through evaluations by psychologists, social workers, physical therapists, dietitians, occupational therapists, and nursing staff. And they're extremely competent and qualified in their fields, especially where they cross with patients affected by Alzheimer's disease. But that's really only part of the story. They, everybody who's involved in the Alzheimer's Family Services Center is personally invested in the health and well-being of the participants at the Alzheimer's Family Services Center. If you ask anybody involved in the center about somebody on a first name basis, they'll know who that participant's best friend is at the center, who loves to give out the bingo cards on Tuesdays. They'll know the gentleman who says he's going to work every day when he's dropped off at the AFSC. And by knowing people so well, they really can make the environment enriching for the participants. So when you have the competency of all these services matched with the deep compassion, understanding, and love for these participants, it's really an incredible combination. The AFSC is such an asset to our community in terms of maintaining quality of life, not only for the participants, but their families. Should we consider a clinical research trial? And if so, what would be involved? That's a great question. This is a really exciting time in the management of Alzheimer's disease because for the first time in about 10 years, we have numerous medications in clinical trials, which are in phase three, um, those levels of trials are recruiting patients from the community to participate. So then that question does come up for affected individuals, should they or should they not participate in a research trial? It's important to understand that when an individual participates in a research trial, the goal is supposed to be to advance science and not to have our own benefit in mind. Because the patient could be receiving placebo medication or they could be receiving the new medication, but it may turn out to be ineffective. So those are some things to keep in mind. However, what usually drives people to participate in studies is the hope that they'll be one of the first people to receive a new medication that ends up being effective. It's important to note that all the current trials for Alzheimer's medications allow patients to stay on the current FDA approved medication regimen in addition to the study drug. So that by participating in a research trial, we're not giving up the benefits of the medications we already know do help slow down this disease process. Participating in clinical research trials is definitely something to discuss with your doctor. Wonderful, thank you so much Dr. Clark for taking the time and explaining all these important concepts. We appreciate it very much. Our viewers on Therapy Cable appreciate it. And we are very happy to having this discussion with you as it relates to Alzheimer's Family Services Center and the great services that they provide. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. There's so much we can do about Alzheimer's disease and related disorders, both from a medical standpoint and from a social standpoint. It's really important that we have all the information available to us. Mm -hmm.